Hello, I'm Pastor Hanno and I want to share with you the short version of the ABC of Christian faith. I have met many people who have said that uh, I don't know if I believe in the right way. And I think that the reason for that is that there are many churches who say that, uh, okay, I, I you can you will get believe when you are baptized. Another church is saying that if you make a decision, a third is saying that the real point that if you are you are believer, if you if you experience something, and in fact the churches which should support each other, they are contradicting with, with each other, and the main reason is that the churches they don't speak about it that the Christian faith is a process. And I think that the best way for us to understand this is that uh, I will use the model, uh, the order which the letter to Hebrews tells us in the beginning of the sixth chapter. The writer says, Therefore let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about baptisms, the laying of the hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment, and God permitting, will do so. Especially here in the country where I'm in, in Finland, the big problem is that the churches which are baptizing the children, they don't speak a lot of about repentance. They are mostly speaking that how God gives gifts in baptism and, and and when they are doing so they are in fact neglecting the fact that traditionally the order was repentance faith baptism repentance means that in a way you are agreeing that you are sinner you you are following your own plan Originally, God's plan was that we know him, we serve him, and with him, his help, we are loving other people. But normally, just because of the sin, every, every body of us is living me-centered life. And repentance means that I'm repenting for, from it. I'm saying, forgive me for my egocentric life. I re repent those sins I'm doing, I want to leave them, and I want to move from me-centered life to God-centered life, from Satan's dominion to God's kingdom. Very often, it's very typical that, uh, that uh, repentance is avoided because pastors themselves they don't have any model or story because they have just been trained maybe in university but they don't have history what what kind of life they had earlier that's why the church is speaking uh, that it, it, you will get everything by faith and maybe uh, by uh, through sacraments but uh, we can say that repentance is the founder, founding book as Jesus was saying in his sermon, uh, the seventh chapter in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus was telling that uh, the, um, the guy who is obedient is like the obedient to his teachings, is like a guy who built his house on the rock. And then that house will survive all oh, that the storm is coming. Because this rock under the house, and it does mean that it's somebody who has the, who has listened what Jesus has taught, but he hasn't only listened, but he has done it. So it's the person who has repented that he's obedient. But there are others who have built their house on the sand. Outwardly, it's like the same. It's like the same kind of Christian life. They are going to the church, doing these things, and uh, everything seems normally. 
But basically, when you think they unvisible life, they aren't following the Lord, they are just living me centered life. And that's why they can't stand against the storm. So the first point is repentance, which does mean that I want to be willing to follow Jesus and hear what he is saying. The next step is faith. When I heard that God had had a plan and I'm on my part, I'm destroying it because I'm living me centered life. So I hear that Jesus came to forgive sins and to change my life. And that's why when I believe him as my Lord and Savior, Jesus will forgive my sins. He took my sins to the cross. He died for me and I'm forgiven. But not only this, the gospel tells that when Jesus died and was resurrected, the same, when I believe in him, it's the same experience which I have experienced. My old aid and my old nature died with him and I'm now resurrected with him to live new life with Jesus. I have a new identity. I think that uh, most of the Christians, they are thinking that, yeah, I'm just only forgiven, that's enough. I continue my life and I'm doing, fulfilling my own plans. But Jesus explains in the Bible that basically it's either, either I'm saved and at the same time I become part of his plan. I can't be only saved and fulfill my plan because that kind of, that isn't the faith. Faith is total trust. When we think about faith, the Greek word pistos, it does mean faith, but it doesn't only mean faith, it's trusting too. And especially if you think that we, are, we, are, we, we don't speak about cross, we don't speak about salvation only, but we are asking, am I believing in living God? Am I following him? We could say that the faith in the Bible, it means not only faith, not only believe, not only trust, but follow too. It, it means everything. And that's why, because we have too shallow understanding about faith, that's why we have problems with it so often. For me, the understanding about faith does mean that when I believe what the Bible says, what Jesus did, after that, if I take that seriously, I have to believe that I'm not anymore sinner. I'm forgiven. I'm not only forgiven, but I'm God's child and I'm justified. And I'm empowered. I'm released. I'm called to serve. Think. What's, how do you feel? Have you taken only a little part that you are saved? Or have you taken... To yourself God's calling God's gift God's empowerment which are meant for every Christian there was repentance and there is faith in early church when people were baptized when they repented and put faith to Christ Normally, they immediately baptized people. It was a concrete way to say that I'm leaving my back, old my history, old wrong kind of uh, involvement since, and I'm leaving old my old life, my back, and then I'm stepping some this 
step to baptized and after that I start to live in the kingdom of God and I start to be dependent on the Holy Spirit so basically baptism speaks a lot about it that our calling is to live our own identity and become servants of God children of God and servants of other people and we are our calling is to find our calling there and then uh, in this Hebrew 6 the third verse the third part was baptisms what baptism and then baptism by the Holy Spirit Jesus said that he is baptizing by the Holy Spirit and he said that uh, those who repent and put faith in him and take baptism he will baptize them by the, by the Holy Spirit to be baptized by the Holy Spirit does mean that uh, the living God takes the, your body and to start to live there by his Holy Spirit. I'm learning to be a Christian who is listening God's voice and who is taking tips. How can I serve? How can I learn? How, how can I be full of Christ? That's why this is major difference. If you only believe in salvation, in most cases, you are just dependent on the past, what he's saying. You are dependent on the books. But when you understand that God saved me and I, he became my Lord, that he could personally lead me. So I understand that he wants to be dependent on the Holy Spirit so that he can lead you to lead the life, which is uh, like a gift to God. I think that if we understand properly what Holy Spirit means and what He does, we understand that Holy Spirit moves us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God. So we are there where Christ is Lord and all the time when we are dependent on the Holy Spirit, we learn to serve Him better we learn to trust him better. We learn to understand grace better. What does it mean? I think that one challenge in our church entity is that because we people are so active in churches, they are trying to do that and that thing. They don't feel necessity to be fulfilled by the Holy Spirit but basically when Christians uh, when people became Christians when you read that from the Bible you see that this they were fulfilled by the Holy Spirit they started to learn to follow the Spirit's leading because everybody understood that God had prepared them good works to do. I think that this is the major reformation which we have to meet, which we have to prepare ourselves so that when we are moving from churchianity forward, we have to have vision that we are God's people where everybody is dependent on the Holy Spirit and we, every, every one of us wants to learn to love and serve others by the power of the Holy Spirit. The next part was uh, the laying on of hands. It speaks about the blessing, passing Holy Spirit to other people, passing empowerment to people. Just now I want to speak about that. It speaks that uh, we are 
released to be representatives of God's kingdom. Whoever you are, God had already, before you were born to this world, plan in which way you could bless other people. He had understanding what you are calling. And when we are Christians, we are supposed just to find our calling. What are those people we could help and how we could bring glory to God? I think that this is the major question what Satan has done. He, he has stolen our promised land, our calling, where we could prosper and bring glory to God. Because we have start, just decided to stay passive Christians who just are waiting to get into heaven. No. We should be understand that God wants to take us further so that we, on our part, can be part of the body of Christ who are serving others. Then there was teaching about the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. It's a big mystery that believers we, we are we have been died with Christ and we are resurrected already and we are living eternal life already now and that's why we know that there is eternal life for us but and uh, that's a secret we can rejoice we can ask other people have been died and have been resurrected and learn that now we are living this eternal life and there will be time when God will resurrect all the people everything will be done new and we are waiting for that time when God's kingdom will be more visible and in the end the, the last thing was the eternal judgment Too often we forgot that basically God is calling us to follow him and he is saying that he will give, give us in the end of this life. He will say as you good servant or if you haven't served properly he will ask why. So we are basically called to serve him. We are basically called to be Christians, to bring him glory. Jesus spoke many times about people who say that, yes, I have been serving you, I've been doing good things, and Jesus said, I don't know you. I think that there are many pastors, many people who are doing spiritual work, but because their heart is full of, maybe they are loving money, or they are loving more appreciation of people, they are doing the spiritual work because they get worldly feedback of it. Maybe God will say them, no, I don't know you. That's why I think that whatever we are doing, secular work or whatever, God is challenging us. I want that you could be for, live for me, ask for me what to do, and be my representative wherever you are. So here were some thoughts about Kingdom life. ABC of the Christian faith in condensed form. Just to encourage you to think that the faith is a path on, on which we are supposed to go forward. God bless you. Bye.